Today we're going to be making a dress. I am feeling a little under the weather still, so it's going to be a very chilled out vlog. <laughs> I feel like I've had this cold for a month now and it's just, as soon as it goes, it then comes back. <laughs> like a day later. So frustrating. But I'm very excited to share this video with you because it's been an idea that I've had in my head for a while. Hopefully we can execute it. <laughs> I've really wanted to make a gingham dress for a while now and I'm going to make a strappy dress that has a lot of gathering around the waist because I want to use my smocking machine which I haven't used properly to create a garment. I made a garment the other day using it but as like a practice run not for this dress but just a practice run for smocking a garment this is my practice smocking I think it's called a bishop's sleeve style where it's just all one continuous piece um, and then at the back I need to put a little button at the top um, the only thing is it creates a lot of volume and I love a lot of volume but I am not sure how I feel about that much volume so I think when I make a blouse in like a proper final fabric and spend a bit more time on the smocking then I will make a separate collar and then have a blouse that's less voluminous underneath um, so it will just be like a smocked collar attached to a blouse and now that I look at a lot of the pictures for women's dresses and women's tops that are smocked that is generally how they're done. I think because this is used this method is used on a lot of children's clothes maybe that's why I'm a bit like Ooh, on me. I've been working on the toile for this dress over the last few days and my goodness it has been a challenge. <laughs> I haven't made a fitted dress in a long time and I started off using my usual method of pattern cutting and quickly realised it just wasn't working so I actually draped on the mannequin and did it that way which I've never actually done before for a fitted garment and I think it's worked pretty well and if you guys have a mannequin at home then it's definitely very doable. Um, I just sort of pinned and cut bits out and then I transferred that onto paper and then check that the measurements were all going to fit together. So that's how I got the pattern. I won't be selling this pattern, I'm just doing this as a little fun project for myself. So the fabric is cut out and ready to go. I haven't cut the skirt panel out yet. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to just start on the bodice and check that that fits perfectly before doing the skirt. And I was just going to do a little facing around the neckline and then bias trim around the sleeves, but then I realised there's going to be a lot of seams and they're not all going to be easy to overlock so I'm just going to line the whole bodice and I think that will look much better anyway from the inside. So I will pop some footage in now of me creating the pattern over the last few days and then we can move on to constructing. fabric I have chosen. It is a really nice lightweight cotton gingham, black cotton gingham and I just keep seeing so many gingham dresses at the moment so it's definitely a bit of a trend this year 
and I also just think gingham is so timeless so you can never really go wrong with a gingham dress. Let's head to the sewing machine because I now need to stitch all of these pieces together. There are many many pieces to this bodice so better get cracking. <laughs> I'm going to start with back pieces because there's less of them so it will ease me into sewing for the day. I'm going to have one long zip going down the back so that'll be how I get in and out of the garment. Right, I'm going to go ahead and stitch these together and then I'll show you what the back's looking like. So you can see how much shape this is going to add just by seeing how much negative space there is in here. So when we add those together it's really going to pinch in the waist and curve around. And when I'm working with really curved pieces like this, it can be hard for them to always end up in the right place. So I find it's easier to have like a constant, like the waistline. So whenever I'm stitching the pieces together, if I'm stitching them in like this, then I will start at the bottom instead of starting at the top, because it can be quite tricky to match up those curves. I have a lot of pieces in the front pattern, so I've got these two pieces at the side, and then I have the top, the top of the chest, under the chest, and then another little one that really cinches it in, and then another one at sort of just under the waistline. So these all need to be stitched together and then these need to be stitched and then that. So it's quite a lot of stitching but it's very satisfying once they're all done together and I need to go and press in between each one. Um, so I have to do them in batches. So these, these will all get done first and I will stitch them together that way and then they all get joined at the centre front with a seam because if they weren't joined with a seam it would be almost impossible to match up the centre front and make it look really neat. So I added a seam in there which I don't usually like to do <laughs> in my centre fronts. Um, and then there's no seam down the centre front of the waist. And then yeah, and then they all get attached to this side part. Yeah, we have the top of the bodice all constructed and now I need to just attach it all down the centre front, matching up all of those seams. And then the last of the centre panel just gets attached at the bottom. There you go, that's the front bodice. Now I need to do the side panels. So we now have the bodice and the side pieces ready to attach. So attach the side pieces. the lining together and I added my little label that will sit in the back as well and now I'm looking for a zip on the zip hunt and I have these really good invisible zips but even though they're invisible you can still slightly see the colour of the zip usually so I was going to see if I had a dark one okay I think these are my two options I think, I don't know why I have these purple ones, 
I don't know where these came from. Um, but I think I I just hate purple so much, so I'm not sure why I have purple zips. Beige is the way I'm going to have to go. Now I'm going to attach the lining at the neckline and make that look really nice and neat before doing the armholes in the sort of burrito style where you sort of roll it and stitch it that way. I can't quite remember how to do it. <laughs> so I've got my outer bodice and the lining and I'm just going to put them good sides facing and stitch all the way around the front and the back of the neckline. I will pin this into place. I don't usually pin things but it's something like a neckline. I definitely <laughs> spend a little bit more time on it to get it just right. And I'm just going to clip into the v-neck and take some of that bulk out. And then I'll also clip the really tight curves. This is such a satisfying step. Especially with the v-necks, I feel like it just folds through so easily. Ooh, that is nice. I'm going to understitch the lining and catch the seam on the other side. Without doing any ironing, it's already sitting pretty much where it should be. So understitching is a bit boring because it's just like stitching again, but such a useful little tip. So now I need to remember how to do this burrito method. It's been so long since I've done the burrito method that I've completely forgotten how to do it. So I just looked it up again and I realised I should not have sewn my side seams yet. So I just unpicked those and now I can try and figure out where to go with this. One side on top of the other and then you just sort of sandwich this other armhole in between all of that. Oh yeah, that makes a lot more sense now. It's all coming back to me. <laughs> okay. Now I've got the straps nicely sewn into place there, the burrito method. And now I just need to finish off the burrito method and close up the side seams. So to do that, I just need to open up the seams and stitch them all the way along. And then they'll be nicely finished off as well. side seam done. That is such an easy method when constructing a sleeveless garment. So I'd highly recommend learning how to do that. I'm going to do the other side, go have some lunch and then check back in with you guys for the next step. We're so nearly done with the bodice. I just added these long sections to the back which will make sense in a minute. <laughs> um, I'm about to add the zip in so I'm going to insert that and I'm going to use the lining to make it look really neat inside so I'll fold it over and stitch it down on the lining side as well. These long sections here are to obviously attach the skirt to um, and I didn't want to have to deal with the smocking and a zip so I thought if I just do all the zip kept in this section and then the smocking I wanted it to sit on top of the skirt anyway, I don't want it to um, be like a normal seam, I just want it to sit flat so you can kind of see the rough raw edge around the middle. Now I've just got to change my machine foot to be my invisible zip foot and I can pop the zip in. God, it's been so long since I have put an invisible zip in. Could not tell you the last time I did it. Let's hope it goes okay. <laughs> 
So ideally I like it to sit like that, right at the top, so that I don't have to put a hook and eye in. Let's hope this is fitting. Oh, perfect! Yay. Fitting! perfectly. I'm so happy because it was a bit too tight earlier so I actually added an extra little seam in the back. That's looking good. There's nothing worse than when you finish making a dress and then it's too tight and then you're just like, oh, I'm never probably going to wear that. <laughs> so it's always worth spending that little bit extra time adding in another seam or taking away another seam if it's too big. Now that I have the bodice done, I need to cut the length for the skirt and the smocking length so I'm gonna cut I think a little bit extra length just in case um, and then yeah we can put it through the smocking machine which is so satisfying I can't wait to show you that. This is a view I have from my sewing machine. The ducks have clearly found a good spot for some grub. <laughs> They're so silly, but very cute to watch. And then of course that's the other cute thing in my studio. The little poodle. Who's fast asleep. Oh no, you're not fast asleep. Hello. Now I need to cut the skirt length, so get my ruler out and I'm pretty sure I measured it to be 2.6 meters that I'd need for the skirt. I basically just times the length that I need it to be on by 3. So that's 2.6 then let's add about 10 centimeters seam allowance. Just So I'm going to just trim it off. And then I'm just going to run a stitch about 0.5 centimeters away from that line so that it doesn't fray. Got the skirt. Next thing we need to do is roll it onto a piece of dowel. And the tricky part about this is getting it to stay parallel. I'm not very good at that. <laughs> um, I did see someone taping it to start with. I mean, that's what they do with like rolls of fabric. They do tape them. Slowly start rolling that. Not the straightest line in the world at the top, but it will do. Now I need to thread up my smocking machine. So the key thing is to have very contrasting thread. So if I just do really bold colours that I can see through the cracks, this is all going to come out in the end anyway, so don't choose like your favourite thread. This is a great time to use all of those thread colours you never use, actually. <laughs> I've turned some lights on, so hopefully you can see a bit more now. I basically I need to go and thread up all of these now and I like to tie a little knot once I've gone through it and then I just some people have boxes that they store the thread in um, but I don't have one of those so I've just been pulling it down the thread down and having the thread sort of dangling on the floor and that seems to be working so far <laughs> so that's what we're going for So this is how I have the setup. I have the smocking machine there and then the thread all comes down onto the floor and it just sits on the floor. <laughs> and then when I feed it through, I bring it all the way down and I just keep bringing the thread further out. 
Seems to be working so far, touch wood. So now we can do the incredibly satisfying part of feeding the fabric through the pleater. So I just feed the dowel through the hole and then you find where you want to start feeding it in. So I then find where I need that fabric to be going and I just twist it under. And this whole time I'm watching where that notch is that the fabric's entering at. So I just really slowly feed it into the pleater and then as soon as it starts to bunch up a little bit you can pull it down onto the threads. Basically it's a constant game of checking tension, checking placement and then bringing it out onto the thread. This is probably the most amount of fabric I've smocked in one go so it'll be interesting to see how this goes. <laughs> It is going to take me a long time to embroider on top of this. chop the threads close to the needles and I'm going to work on this bit first. There we go and I've just tied a knot right at the end of those and then I will leave the other threads long for now and I'm just going to lie this out and then I'm going to grab my bodice and I'm going to see how much gathering I need to do. It's about right for the amount of gathers so now I'm going to work in pairs of two threads at a time. So I'm going to trim them a bit shorter and then I'm going to bring them out away from the edge a bit. So I take about three out three stitches out and then I just tie that into a double knot, just those two together. Okay, and then I take the next two, take three stitches out, and then I will tie those. Might even tie it a third time, just to be on the safe side. Then once all of those are tied in a knot, I can start to push the gathers against it so that they're really tight and then we can start to figure out how much we need to loosen them by. I'm not actually going to sew it onto the garment like this, I'm just using this as a measuring guide. Okay, I now need to pin this onto the bodice all the way around. So I'm going to start at one end and it's going to get pinned to this bit here where I had that strange long tail. <laughs> I'm going to very carefully try it on. Now I can see if I like the gathers sitting there or not. And I actually think they need to come up a bit higher. So I'm going to take some of these pins out and raise this up. It's now the next day. I've got a very nice sunny day by the looks of it. Hopefully it will stay this way all day because we've got a lot of hand sewing to do today. First thing I need to do with this dress is tack the skirt panel to the bodice and then I might machine stitch it on as well. I'm not sure if it should just be a hand stitching job or if it would be okay to just machine it on. Knowing me, 
probably going to machine it on. <laughs> but I'm going to pop it on the table and just make sure the gathers are all looking even and then hand sew and attach it on so that I'm not constantly getting stabbed by pins all the time. Because I seem to have gashed myself quite a lot with pins yesterday after trying it on. Silly me. So I'm just starting at the back and I'm just manipulating those pleats so that they look reasonably gathered and not any big gaps of open pleat. onto the dress it is so cute I have got trousers on under this so it won't lie completely like this but I'm so happy with how this is looking I think one side of the back might be a tiny bit higher than the other so when I'm stitching this down onto the machine I think I will go I'll take note of that. So I'm going to take this over to the sewing machine and stitch a straight stitch all the way around the top following that first pleating line and hopefully that will look okay. Now I need to decide the smocking style to do on the pleats. I also need to choose the colour of the thread that I want to use. So I've just sort of manipulated all the pleats so that they're in the right position. Um, this is one of my favourite samples that I did and I'm definitely going to do a dress or top of some sort in this fabric because it holds the pleats really well. Um, but I liked the gingham so I wanted to do gingham first and then here's another little sample I do really like the zigzag and that's been my sort of go-to so I think I'll probably just repeat this pattern I also quite like adding in the little um, are they called bullion curls? but they're basically just like you roll the embroidery thread around a needle and then put it back in and it gives you these little polka dots. So yeah, I'll start with this sort of holding stitch right at the top. Time to choose the colour. I have a reasonable amount of embroidery thread. Obviously you can do whatever colour you want. <laughs> blue might be quite nice or maybe two different kinds of blue or white but I think the white is just a bit too dark. It would probably show up quite well but I don't know. Oh, this is a tricky decision because once you've decided you're then sort of committed. <laughs> well, green could work actually. I like the green because it's different enough but it's not like standing out in your face. So I'm going to start with this green because I love this green. I think it's really pretty. And then you can use the thread at this thickness, but I have been using it at about three strands. And I'm just going to unravel this bit of embroidery thread so that I can see all the different strands. And I like to take three strands, so I think there's six yeah, there's six in total, so I'm just splitting this in half. So there we go, we've got one length halved there. And now we can take this length and start stitching. And then I'll tie a knot at the end. I don't always tie knots these days when hand stitching, but for this I do. So I tie a knot and then we're going to find... 
our first entry. And when you smock, you stitch from left to right. So you're going to choose where you're going to start. I go in from the back and I go up into the first, right next to the first pleat. So with smocking, you have the rows and you either go over the thread or under the thread as in like the thread stays at the top and then you pick up the next pleat and then sometimes the thread goes at the bottom when you pick up the next pleat. So for this one this is a really easy stitch this first one and it sort of keeps the pleats staying really nice and close together. So you just lift up for one and you don't we're not going to move down or up we're just following the same line. So it goes up for one and it's almost naturally down in the next one. So we just take that down, pull it tight a little bit, and we just go up into the next one. So it's very simple. It just takes a lot of patience because obviously there is a lot of pleats to go through. And I shouldn't need to have a crazy long piece of thread because I can actually just stop somewhere, put a knot in the back and then carry on. So I'm not too worried about running out of thread halfway through. So there we go, I'm just going to carry on for a bit and then I'll check back in with you guys. Okay, I've done my first row, looking like that. And now I'm trying to decide if I want to do another row exactly the same underneath it or just start with the zigzagging. I think I'll just start the zigzag and then I can always go and add another straight one in at the end. You might be able to see that a little bit better now. So when I go up, I have the thread under. And you're always stitching from right to left. finish the smocking. It's currently 8 o'clock. Let's see when I started the smocking. So I'd say the smocking's probably taken me like six hours to do. <laughs> but it's worth it. It's a very soothing activity. Very happy with how that's looking. I decided to just stick with the little zigzag. So now I'm going to remove the stay stitches, the pleats. Before I pull them out, I'm going to give it a, a little steam on the iron. Might be tricky because I've never done it on such a large piece of smocking before. Ta-da! The dress is now finished. I spent yesterday finishing off the smocking. It took me, I think, a total of six hours to do all of the smocking around the waist. Also added some ties at the back because the zip wasn't looking quite how I wanted it to but yeah so I'm kind of distracting it with this bow. So let me put the dress on and I can show you how it looks. I also hemmed the bottom but I thought you guys didn't need to see that so I just did that this morning. Just hemmed it up by about three centimetres at the bottom. It is so cute. I'm just doing up the bow at the back. I'm so happy with how this has turned out. It's so comfortable as well. I think I would definitely prefer wearing a long sleeve underneath it, especially seeing as the weather's not great at the moment. <laughs> I think it'd be a really great summer dress, but also will be super easy to layer underneath. Stupidly didn't think about adding pockets, but I don't think it really needs 
but it could have pockets. And here's a full length shot. I love it. I am completely smocking obsessed. My hands though are not looking so great. <laughs> I find hand sewing really dries my hands out. So there we go, that is the end of the video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. I am already planning my next garment to make with the smocking technique. I'm going to do a nice big amount of smocking around a collar and then some long puff sleeves with smocked cuffs. <laughs> Couldn't think of the word then. I have so many things I want to make at the moment that I'm really enjoying this feeling of being inspired and actually wanting to make. And then I've also got a really fun little beginner project coming soon for a brush roll, like a makeup brush roll. Um, I made it a few weeks ago and I've been testing it out whilst I've been doing my makeup to check that I like how it works and everything. So I cannot imagine not using it now. So I'm definitely going to release the pattern. And I think it's a really good one that you guys could very easily make. So look forward to that. I hope you're all having a great day and I will see you in my next video.